I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Today is uh, January, thank you Gail, January 22nd, Monday evening. I'm going to open the meeting at uh, 6.30. All board members are here as well as Mr. Danforth and um, his uh, advocate. Um, well, why would you be calling us saying it's it's not going to be discussed tonight? I mean, it's just that the wire inspector and the... Uh, is going to update. Um, okay. I'd like to be updated on my house. You will I have, I have an interest. Mm -hmm. I'm down. Yep. So you will. It was just confusing to us. I mean, you had said originally if it was an emergency meeting, you would have 48 hours notice to notify us. I had 48 <coughs> hours to post it. Right. Madam Chair, not correct. There's an emergency meeting, meeting that has to be posted as soon as possible. Okay. But there's no time limit of 48 hours on an emergency meeting. Okay. We were advised that under Rule 4 that he should have gotten actual notice sent to him and, or, and served correct service. So to, um, you know, our understanding is if he didn't get proper notice and if it was an emergency notice, a verbal phone call would not suffice and comply with that rule four. A verbal a verbal phone call would suffice? In an emergency. In an emergency situation. The meeting that was called that did not happen on the 12th. Was an emergency. Was an emergency. But the January 8th meeting was not an emergency and he did not get proper notice under rule four, which according but to... But he, he at came. Time, and at that point we tabled it. We did table for two it weeks, for two weeks. But then it was beyond our control because the wire inspector said the house was a hazard. Right. But they're going to explain that when they get here. Okay. Well, that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because what happened was in front of our board was a condemnation. We took a vote. I missed it. It ended up being tabled. Yeah, and that's what we really okay. relied upon two to, to do the work. Two to, two to one. Right. <coughs> okay, there were two votes, yes. And I'm yes. doing the best one I vote can. To, but we thought we had no. two weeks, we, and but, then... What we ended up having was away. Tuesday. I was in here. Mm -hmm. Was on the phone with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lisa was on the phone with yep. the tenant. We were trying to come to a mutually agreed upon, right. which we were unable to. You had said suggested she had a voucher and therefore mm -hmm. it might. We be. were advised that she was had she had housing. She just needed yeah. to be. More, yeah, uh, proactive. Out of there in an emergency situation. But has anybody seen the housing? Uh, you know, I mean, she could say anything. We when the wire inspector went out. Yes, and then what happened was the wiring inspector, I got him on the phone. He was queried in regards to it. He said, I can't believe that that house hasn't been condemned yet. Right. I said our board election. voted to table it. Yeah. And he said, absolutely not. And then and he went upstairs. Yeah. Okay, and as our, oh, here comes everybody. No, he said it shouldn't have been condemned. Mm -hmm. And okay. then now she's saying in court today that there's rat, rat pool. Okay, so right. that, but that's on your court issue? No, uh -huh. that she said the board issue. The board, yeah, yeah she said we she didn't go get before any the board of, of health. No, she didn't come before the board of health. We have nothing from our health. She claimed Lisa Cullity went out there the Friday. Yeah. You were out there Friday. Did you see Lisa Colony? I did not. Yeah, she okay. said now there's a new complaint and you approved a uh, rat poop on the, you Lisa added, did. yeah, or Lisa added the. We have no report. As in inhabitable. No, 
that has to we need a copy of that report that report well, she has said, come yeah, forward. I don't know who she said and Sheila's calling. our secretary so she will answer it um everybody if you want to come on in Carolyn how are you I'm good um this is Mr. Dan Forth and his legal advocate hi, hi how are you Carolyn Murray hello this is nice Carolyn Murray nice from um Copel and Page nice KP Law how are you sir thank you how are you Nick? Hello. Good to see you. <clears throat> Carolyn Murray hi Carolyn Marianne Brown nice to and meet you. this is Mr. Ed Dorn um, we, I was just trying to explain to, um, there seems to be some confusion, um, in regards to what happened. They've just come from court. Um, there was confusion in regards to the board where we had a condemnation in front of us. Um, there was a two to one vote that we would table the condemnation. Condemnation of the whole house of the second floor. Condemnation was of the second floor unit. You said it was a multifamily, and we found out it was assessed as a two unit. Yep, uh, here I am Doesn't being matter. billed for two, two separate units. trash pickups. Do you have the um, two family from the um, assessors? Okay, I, I do not. No, you do. You? Yeah, I have. Okay, it. what I'd like to do is I don't want to keep um, okay. our inspectors um, and Sorry. town council. Okay. Um, what proceeded after our Monday night meeting of tabling that and advising the um, tenant that smokes and carbons had to immediately be installed Which in the was. dwelling. Um, Tuesday I was in, I could not come to an agreement between the tenant and the landlord. We had both advocates on the phone. Um, that became unacceptable and left to the board when the Board of Health tabled it. And I called an emergency meeting to have canceled. everybody there. The reason the board it, it was canceled was because it, we could not get a quorum of board members. Two out of three could not attend. But again, the original meeting that we had with you on January 8th, it was a verbal phone call. It wasn't an emergency. And we were told that even though we did come and the condemnation issue was tabled for two weeks, that under Rule 4, we didn't get the actual, the, he didn't get a proper service. Okay, but we, we went through with that meeting, but that's why I have legal counsel here. Yeah, but if he didn't get proper service, none of this would have transpired. That's what he was told today by a court advocate, because she's claiming that the board condemned it, not only condemned it, no, but we said did it's not. an illegal an apartment. No, we, we, it is, I would like to have the building department, um, can you kind of clarify where we're at, um, Ed, what, well, someone? Like Carolyn, dude. Carolyn, if you'd like to take the floor. Sure. Um, the Board of Health hasn't taken any action, any affirmative action with respect to this, nope. how, this property that I'm aware of yet. Nope. Instead, what happened was that based on violations of the electrical code and under the state building code, the building inspector, the electrical inspector, and the town administrator as the director of municipal licenses, they issued the letter condemning the second floor unit, mm -hmm. which was served um, by a constable, I believe, on January 12th. Yes, so it was. Uh, yep, Friday afternoon. Right. And she was supposed to vacate within 48 hours, mm -hmm. which she failed to do. Okay. And from that point, just everything went before the court this morning and based upon the condemnation letter of the three gentlemen um, the court said that she needed to be up in a motel and Mr. Danforth needed to pay her like a hundred and twenty dollars a day for housing and for food because the house was illegal and it was condemned. So now he doesn't have the money, mm -hmm. and now she's holding him in contempt, and tomorrow a warrant is going to issue for his arrest. As everyone knows, his health has been at issue here. Uh, we're trying to do everything to be proactive. We have gone out. I went out with the wire inspector, mm -hmm. and we had an electrician out there. We've completed the electric work. Um, we've installed the smokes. We've got very little to do, I believe but the court suggested there were certain criteria on the, um, the checklist, like caulking of the windows that wouldn't make the house necessarily uninhabitable. uninhabitable. Necessarily. Mm -hmm. So they had certain issues as to, 
but they granted her request and now we're here respectfully trying to find out what we have to do between now and like tomorrow uh, to get this house not to be uninhabitable. Does clocking on an antique win in windows have to be perfect? On Could we have like a plastic in inside? Does that make it Acceptable? I'm going to defer to the building inspector on that. That's I mean, we're not just, my area of expertise. And we didn't know whether an escape ladder, because... It's, it's an antique. Mm -hmm. 1800 it was built. Well, they, get, they have to um, be leak-proof. Yeah. So, yeah, she claimed um, it was leaking. They're not everyone, leaking. But we but didn't... Without did seeing you, the, the exact thing you're talking did about. Did you go out to the to house? See. I did, but I didn't look at that particular thing. You didn't look at it. So who suggested caulking of the windows? Probably Lisa, because it would be part of her inspection. Even though she's wiring? She's the health yeah, department? She's the health so inspector. Caulking was one of the things noted on her report. But okay. On the health report? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's on health. We, there was no notice of damage that we could see. Uh, we did try and remedy the uh, some of the things after the October 26th list issue. <clears throat> but we were unable to get into her apartment twice. We had two carpenters that were willing to give him a free estimate. She wouldn't let us in. Friday, we begged her to- Why is she dictating? Trust me, tenants have all the rights in the world, I respectfully say. That's you know Friday- ago, you said the wiring has been all done. Who told you that? That's what the electricians, did he talk we to have, this morning? We have, Steve Cohen this morning. We have we the paperwork. Did he them. talk to you? He no, was supposed to come- No, they don't permit to do anything on that. Right. Okay, well, he claimed that he completed it and he was going to meet with you this morning to sign off. In his opinion, he did not see any any issues upstairs to be a health issue. You can read his... A well, health issue is one thing. Yeah. We're just looking for amicable resolution somehow. Well, it'll be interesting to see if the, if Mr. Cohen actually pulled a... a well, he went out with the wiring department. inspector. Right. Yeah. I mean, we were under the impression that Friday morning he did go pull, and then either that. The wiring inspector, he knew he was coming. Right, but you we know, don't know. I'm we just really know that he did the work, and a bill is before us to pay it. But again, we were asked some challenging questions today whether or not, you know, this would really make the house uninhabitable for a tenant to get housing paid for by the landlord every day from from this point forward. If, if he did, did that corrective work, or at least even if a half of that was on and those, uh, some of the important issues were addressed, I'd be happy. Okay. Even though, even though, you know. And you, you know him personally, so I don't think he would have put well, this. I don't know him that personally. I, I, I know of him. But every he, he issue was stuff. addressed. Do you want to okay. read that and maybe um, out loud to the board, Donna? Just that's his opinion, but as an electrician, it clearly states that he did not see any help. He was there two days. Listen to what she has to say. To whom it may concern changing outlets upstairs and bringing outlets near the kitchen sink up to code where there was grounded outlets. No, he installed grounded outlets, so, so it should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what, the, and non-grounded box. Um, I don't know what that word is. Plus, no, plugs, plugs, plugs were changed, two-prong outlets as per code. I didn't see any uh, upstairs. something upstairs that would be a health issue. The apartment was very clean, no mold, etc. under the cabinet counter. Um, you could walk barefoot in the apartment and not feel threatened. She has two cats upstairs. It's I smelt litter box. Food on the floor, round kitchen sink, and the bathroom was cleaned. Okay. Did he have all the boxes moved away out of the furnaces downstairs? Yes, he yeah. did. Yeah. He was that? down in the cellar for the set. The he gets out the permit. The, the permit fee he, he wrote on the bill is wrong. Okay, mm -hmm. we don't have no thirty dollar fees or whatever. Okay, the smallest we have is seventy five. Oh, okay, so, so that seventy five. Uh, no no permit has been issued. <clears throat> I'd gladly meet him, but if that's the case, I'd meet him tomorrow at any time. Okay. To say, okay, straighten out that. Uh, that would satisfy me. Okay, so what? How do we get that in motion? I mean, I'll call Steve. Okay. Okay. 
First, I need a permit, okay? I can't yeah. act without a permit. So if he can come here in the morning first thing? Absolutely. Okay. Be, I'm here at quarter eight in the morning. Okay, so next issue to be addressed other than the electrical, because this seemed to refer everything to the National Electrical Code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would you issue an occupancy? I mean, what do you issue? I sign up. An agitation of condemnation? Yeah, uh, even if it was, let's say it was 75% um, complete. Okay. If he did this, there's about probably four things that really bothered me. Okay? Yes, yes. If he we did those, see, the others I'd wait for. It's okay, I'll give you a. Okay. Uh, well, you know. And what about the clocking of the window? No, that's not me. That's Mr. Very, right? More, more Lisa. She should go back to, to her report. Yeah, because we didn't I'm see I'll the other the other stand. thing, George. I'll, um, I'll go back out there with her. Yeah, yeah. and I, I would like both of you to go, um, if that's at all possible. The bedroom uninhabitable due to the ceiling it's height. Not That's not it a bedroom. It is not a bedroom. How many no times do I have to make this Billy, clear? calm down. I'm, I'm calm down. Okay, it's a but loft. they keep saying it's a bedroom. That's because she not. advised them that it was When a I was there, she was sleeping there. Is her bed in that? She is her put bed a there. mattress up there. Okay. okay. But okay. she was normally sleeps on the couch. She has built a box. It was all open. She built a box. And that's her opening up there now. Like she put the walls up for the egress. Mm -hmm. She's the one who boarded the egress yeah. up. And right, but if there's if there's a bed up there, it's, it's safe a, to it's assume not a, it's a mattress. It's no, a blown up no mattress. But there's no I, ha I have no to make it a legal bedroom. Mm -hmm. I have no control over what she does with the furniture. Yeah, I mean legally Donna. it's not a bedroom, Donna, because there's no closet in it. And mm -hmm. I told her when she moved in. It was a studio. Okay. She's done everything to make me look bad. Billy's rented this for the last twenty years and she convinced the judge today that it's an illegal multi family per Donna you know, on the board, and that it's condemned by the whole town, so. I feel like I'm being attacked, Donna. I'm sorry you feel that way, because I think that there's a lot of moving parts to this. What we're doing, we're, I'm doing everything I we're can to mm -hmm. act in on a limited income. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm trying mm -hmm. to act in the best faith I can. Mm -hmm. George, in regards to the <coughs> legal or illegal, um, we understand that the planning um, or the um, the advisory doesn't have any paperwork in regards to this. Is it illegal or is it you, a... You mean the assessors? Um, well, the assessors are, are calling it a multi-family. No, no, they're not. They're calling it a two-family. The, um, the records always show that. Of but there's two uh, bills yeah. issued. It's two bill issues two separate for the trash. Meters, am I correct, Nick? Mm -hmm. Three Everything separate. Three I separate. pay for the hot water. There's three meters, sure. Yeah. And one's for the upstairs and one's for the downstairs. It's not assessed as a multi-family, though. It's assessed as a two-family unit. From a zoning point, though, n none of this matters. Um, See, we didn't. We don't know that. Yeah, that's yeah, so, what so we're so looking for. Uh, the answer. Yeah. Well, what makes it a two-family? A decision by the zoning board would be one. I mean, at some fire point fire. in the future, we'll definitely, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we need to do. Yeah. The Board of Health yeah. requires two separate tanks. Two, two separate what? Unit. Two separate septic tanks. Septic tanks. One for each unit. Two separate Why septic tanks? Why septic? Why do we require two septic Even tanks? Even if there's only two people for each living? kitchen. For each, for each unit. And for is that unit. a state it's law or a town bedroom. law? I've no. never heard of that. Yep. I thought it was only a third of mm -hmm. I mean, It's project. not an attached dwelling. It's part they of the... They can share a leaching field, but they have to have their own tank. They have to have their own Even tank. Even if it's attached? Yes. Yes. Is that a state law or town law? I, look it up. I thought it was under I, I don't know how bedrooms. to look it up. You don't... No, we've had in-laws be put on that have a, a bathroom, uh, I mean a kitchen, and they've had to add a separate tank. But this hasn't been on, added on. This is all one same unit. I guess I'm confused it's on this been, one. Yep. Because this is one house that's always been existing the same way. I'm, I'm sure you'll do some investigation and, and follow that through. I actually think you should talk to Lisa about that. And she'll give you all the laws in regards to that. I can look up the laws, but thank you, Dawn. You're welcome. Yep. Carolyn? Well, one, I want to circle back to the electrical work that's been done and the electrical inspector saying he'd be happy to meet um, Mr. Cohen out there. Yes, he needs a permit to do the work. And yes, you need to go out there and inspect the work, whatever work has been done. If you are satisfied 
or partially satisfied by the work that's done, then tomorrow following your inspection there ought to be an inspection report and we should follow up. Because if, we, if that's going to be sufficient to lift the condemnation order, we should do that as quickly as we can. Could we fax something, assuming to the court, an adjudication of the condemnation, something in support of? We could say, we're not a party to the court matter. Understood. So, I mean, whatever we generate, like there's got to be, you know, a lifting or a release of the order, or at least a partial release of the order. If, Depending upon the extent of work remaining. Now, the only thing to be I'm done. worried about the opposite right now, okay, I asked the Friday, I says, How are you heating here? Since there's no oil, I mean, you even told us that. Right, because she didn't get All any right? fuel. She's heating assistance. it with the range door open and a portable heater, which I worry about when you start taxing the old wire. And, and I'm scared to death of the right. space here. So you start taxing it, say, you know, most residential appliances you buy, first they get stamped on it, it's not, a, not for commercial use. Mm -hmm. All right, so you mm -hmm. start using it as a heater. It, you, you violated, number one, the listing of it. Right. Okay, and you can go from there. So I feel sorry for her. Yet, you know, yet on the other hand, she she doesn't want to fill the oil tank because she didn't get fuel assistance, and yeah. she feels entitled to fuel assistance. System, well, that's assistance. That's cold weather, and they saying that's how you've been heating up here. Yes, and, and it's not with my knowledge, first of all, and it would never. I would never accept it. Right, we didn't know, and like the smoke You know, I'm, I'm scared to death of those little heaters. I mean, look at Boston. You see a house burn down every other day. Now, is that legal? You can heat with any, all the space heaters you want? Are for someone who's disabled? With, with those things in mind, what about the second means of egress? That's what she had boarded up. She actually took a hammer and put that... There were three supply. boards. But there Mr. Three. Danforth said at our meeting that he gave her permission to do that. That's all the same here. No, no, I don't believe I said I gave you her permission. I think she said she was doing it because okay. she needed her um, privacy. privacy. But she and had I, three. I, right. There was a ladder. I mean, I'll a check back ladder. on the tape, but I believe you Mr. said Barry, that you gave you her. Separate means of okay, meetings. if I did, I misspoke. But okay. the only way that those doors opened was from inside where it is at the um, bottom. bottom of her stairs. You couldn't go in from my house into her, her apartment. It was a separate egress, but there was a third egress over the deck. He had one of those escape ladders out mm -hmm. there. We and that's gone. That was all on the ground outside with the smoke detectors when we went over there to put the smoke detectors in. And, you know, they didn't just jump out the window. So did you put the ladder back up? We haven't yet because she wouldn't allow us to get back in after we did the smoke. No, I'm going to get time, a new one, too. It's, yeah, the it's, next it's time we crappy. had to beg her to allow the wiring inspector, but she dictated 5 o'clock on Friday afternoon or something crazy. She wouldn't let us in any time. I almost called you. But she did but allow I him to, to I asked you to call me. Yeah, and I did. I not left allow you a message. You didn't access. get back to me. On Friday? I believe so. Yeah, because we had okay. the electrician out there Friday. Okay. It was about 10. Because the last time I have, I talked to you was on Thursday Tuesday. night, January yeah. 11th. I did not get that. Yeah, that's when you were going to call the emergency meeting. That was Friday morning. No, you called me the Thursday night at 8.30. Or Tuesday night at 8. That was Sheila that called you. It was Sheila? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sheila called you Thursday evening. About, yeah. And she said to the court, I'll be out tomorrow, I'll be out in what? This week, at three days or something, yeah, I give her five thousand yeah. dollars. With because with the town has condemned it and they decided it's an illegal apartment. And don't look at the four thousand dollars that she hasn't paid in rent because the house and, is uninhabitable. And was that all that she wanted? Oh, and to um, Put her register her car and insure her car. She wants five thousand dollars by Friday and a month to stay on there, even though it's. Or alternatively, she's looking for the sky. Hotel. She's got everybody okay. fooled. Well, I understand that, but that's a matter that's right. in the we court. That unfortunately, you what can you the have town to do? Should we, get in all these rules? Should we call the media? Because this is like a disabled man trying to just you know live and get specifics as to what he needs to do to conform, so she can't you know drain him anymore. He's going to go to jail. Carolyn, didn't we just make? Did you make a suggestion to the electrical inspector? Can you reiterate what it, It's more than, an, more than a suggestion. We need what to action? follow up. If, there, if there's corrective action that's taken yeah. that is sufficient for the electrical inspector to find that that 
condemnation order should be lifted completely, then we need to issue a release of that tomorrow based on your inspection. If there are still certain things that need to be done, but in your opinion, they are things that wouldn't render the unit uninhabitable, then we need to just list that and make that clear. Um, so we do need to issue some sort of follow-up notice. Thank you. Could that be done as soon as tomorrow? Absolutely. That's assuming that the electrician yep. and takes the electrical inspector. Mr. Suchello, right behind you, Mr. Dan. He doesn't take out a permit. Yeah. He's in violation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So he takes out a permit tomorrow. See, this is where I, I get didn't in there understand that you, you okay, not ask for permission, you know, 10 o'clock. Okay, but to us, it's an emergency, and you should have the right to come in, given it supposedly is a safety issue. But, again, whether she'll allow us in, you know, she's claiming notice, 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 and so do we just knock on our door? Is that the way we're going to handle it? Because know, dealing with the, I isn't she there. out of the apartment? Not at all. No. Okay, okay, so left. she's still there. I have a question. Regardless of these steps that are being taken, <coughs> what perked my ears is no oil, <coughs> no right. heat mm -hmm. in the second Her unit. Choice. How can How can a condemnation be lifted? How can she be forced well, to put oil? Let's be clear right okay. now. The condemnation that's been issued is, um, is coming yeah. through the state building code and the yes. electrical code. Mm -hmm. If there's a lack of heat in the unit, that comes under the state sanitary code. Mm -hmm. So that would be something for the health agent to look at. But that's now, not my responsibility. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I mean, whether or not she's choosing to not get oil, it's or whether choice. or not there's an issue with the oil tank, I, I don't know She's what the situation to. is there. She's choosing not to. The, the oil tank is like 10 years old, brand new. And it's a separate... I have two separate oil tanks, mm -hmm. two separate furnaces. Well, she also has an advocate who's working with her, doesn't she, or someone? Yes, yeah, she does. Mm. Because someone had advised that they had found another place for her to live. Yes. Right, and then she claimed to the court today that she never told anyone here that she had a voucher. She looked no. at us like, I don't know where you ever got mm -hmm. that information, and I know mm -hmm. I spoke with someone. And they believe in her because she has an advocate, and we, we're, we're sitting there looking like liars. Mm -hmm. You know? And uh, so now they're um, putting out, what is that for me? And I'm gonna They're going to issue Billy a guardian ad litem. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, because in yeah, all fairness to him, he's coming. not going to, he hasn't understood a lot of the process. I know that sure. the initial letter issued in October 26th, but when you're going through dialysis three or four times a week and you're in stage four renal failure, the memory lapse is definitely a part mm -hmm. of it all. So why he didn't comply, he didn't comply because he didn't understand, he didn't comply with, uh, putting her up in a hotel because it came out as a restraining order. I just looked at a restraining order. I go, I can't, okay, I it, can't go near her. It was a restraining order motion that allowed her to get compensation for a hotel daily and to put um, food, $20 voucher for food. So now she and, wants $5,000 by Friday friendly. and she'll move out. And it's like she's got everything, you know, in her favor, if you will, and we just want to comply so she'll get out eventually, but right now time is ticking for him because he doesn't have the money to comply with the court order to put her up in a hotel. He hasn't paid the electrician. Presumably we're going to have to get one of the carpenters back in to do the caulking or whatever else we need. Right, we need right. clarification and, you know, so he's in a, he could right. be in jail in two days and then it's just going to everything's going to soar. Right. So we're trying to, you know, avoid that at all possible cost. Well, I think the, the bright light here, if there's been one, yes. is that you've had an electrician go out and do some work. Yeah. You've heard the electrical inspector say that if 75 of that, 75 percent of that has been done, he'd be happy. So I think we start with your electrician pulling a permit first thing tomorrow morning meeting up with the electrical inspector, getting in there to see what was done, and then s then reassessing with the electrical inspector whether or not you lift 
the entire condemnation order. Will you be working with him and Our follow office up and would stuff? Work okay. after following his inspection. Right. Oh, okay. Right. What if the condemnation order was lifted tomorrow? Would I still be re responsible to um, well, go back to the court? Yes. Yes. We still have that, to. That doesn't change you that file a motion but, to it, but say it's brought up to code? I mean, if if it's going to be, if Sheila's not an attorney. Oh, I'm Gail. okay. But if the common, de common Gail is not an attorney. Uh, okay, I understand that. Okay, I just don't. I I I'm I'm just motion. I'm actually telling her not to answer. She, you're asking her legal questions. Okay, I'll I'll just go back to the court. Say okay. this has been done. This has been done. This has been done. But I'm my concern, correct. My concern is if Nick takes a, a partial condemnation off of it, if she's not putting oil in that oil tank, she no and she is, she's not, she has no hold intention. on, hold on, uh. and she is, oh, she is using the oven to heat the unit, that is a sanitary under the health agent, right. so we now see. we're still, she's if not. I'm not mistaken, in the same situation that now it would be a, com it could be condemnation by a sanitary code. Now that'd be your ballpark, yeah. Correct. Right. So we're still, because we can't force her to put oil, mm -hmm. and if the condemnation is lifted, she gets to go back into that apartment. She hasn't put oil in the tank, doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize she's not going to do it. Right. Yeah, exactly. And now we have a fire issue. Yeah. Right, and that's, and that's my that point. That we cannot control. Right. I'd, I'd like to look at the egresses again. You say there's three. I only saw one. Yeah, because again, mm -hmm. one was boarded mm -hmm. up. The two down the, the bottom of the stairs are boarded up. The, and the, the, yeah. the yeah. one onto the, the, the patio. Hallway, so it's not counted as two, regardless if there's four doors. This, it's just one hallway yeah. from her hall. From her okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's two egresses. So we've got the door that she goes into and then the other they, side. They won't, they're not allowing that the as egresses. Side. They're not allowing the other side. Could I get some clarity on that? An egress is no, an exit. I'm I'm talking about how she goes up on the left side, and then there's a, a porch, like a fifty. Yeah, there's a porch, and porch. there was a ladder up there. Excuse me. What does that egress lead to? Okay, that's the one that you had the ladder on. Right. right. Correct. It was deck. I'm yeah. right. just trying to understand. So the ladder that. Right. Well, that's what we need clarification on because we did have mm -hmm. one there as a, and with the smoke and the carbons. So who do we speak to to find out? Because if he's going to go out and expend more money that he doesn't have, we want to make it right. And if it means that he has to put $20 or $200 worth of oil in the tank, we want to work with you all. We're desperately seeking help. So anything you can advise us to make this in compliance, we, we would really appreciate it. We'll do that also, okay? How my report when it was dated whatever in October or whatever. Yeah, twenty-six. Okay? No, I understand he had it somewhere in October. Mm. This was January. Understood. I couldn't even get a panel cover put on. Right, understood because you couldn't get in there, and I do. But again, in fairness to him, he has been suffering worse, more so, um, over the last two, three months with the three to four days a week dialysis. It puts him out there. They give him medicine. He's in bed. 23 out of the 24. Not that that's an excuse, because it's not. Physically do the work, okay? He but he doesn't have the money because oh. she stopped paying. She's in arrears like almost six months now. We're getting the money for the electrician now. We haven't paid him. He said We're that working he with he'd him he'd work with in the money. hopes that she pays something, but now according to her in the court, since the house is uninhabitable, mm -hmm. everything back to October 26th, Stating I mean, let's everything. Say, let's say that on well, my part would change tomorrow. Which You're right. Assuming it does, that's what we we need clarification. Mm -hmm. If we put oil in the tank, even if it's a hundred dollars worth, would that satisfy Lisa? I would like to have you um, get in touch with Lisa. And w what's her schedule Thank look you, like Donna. for tomorrow? But why would I have to put oil? Well, Fifty dollars worth of oil. You know what? If you need to comply, she's going to move. She she'll be moving back in. 
And then she 50 hasn't moved out. She has, yeah, moved she hasn't out. moved out. Yeah. But in, yeah. Is there any recourse to us on that? You people issue the condemnation. I think the, the worst of the evil, though, is if you're talking it's going to be a sanitary violation for her not to have oil because it is putting that apartment into danger. Right, but the Absolutely. fact that 48 okay. hours she never yep. left, what, what recourse is in the, the town If you could just, you have? Mr. Very, um, I don't know if you can help me with this, but if they would have just put oil into the tank... She'll okay, run the fifty dollars so out, and that's She's going be it. to, but if it makes it comply. Okay, but right now. You need a service guy to purchase it. You know, so put oil in it and start it. Right. It's going to be purged. Right. And start what? Purge. It's going to be purged. Get the air out of the fuel line. The air out of it. Simple matter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you have any? Any? Does anyone have any suggestions? I just want her out. I need, I need a caretaker. What is the town's recourse? Maybe you could answer this. She didn't vacate within 48 hours. This supposedly this major safety, you know, uninhabitable issue, but she won't leave. He even called the police and tried to say she was now trespassing. Right. Okay. What is the town's position? You've asked her to leave. You gave her 48 hours notice. And She's nobody still there. will enforce it. No one is enforcing. We would have to go to court and get a court order. And serve it upon her to vacate. And you then, would have then to. How do we ask be, you to do that? Well, once we comply, it, maybe. Well, the problem is once you comply, we, if we lift the condemnation order, we have no reason mm -hmm. to get her out or to get any. Tenant so why out. couldn't you do it in advance? You sent the notice 48 hours. Typically, vacate. typically that's not how the towns do it. Typically, you issue a condemnation order first. Typically, you try to work through the property owner. She's not willing to work. I, I understand, with us. but but typically, what we do mm -hmm. is we work through the property owner. Nobody wants to put anybody out on the streets. We we, we often. Oh, believe me, I do. We typically, but well, but understand, <laughs> you have a different perspective and interest in this than yes, the town. We yeah. tried to pay her to move out today, and she adamantly said no way I'm going before but a judge. We, we have to follow a process Understood. too. So our condemnation order goes to the property owner because even though some of this might be the responsibility or actions taken by the tenant, yes. mm -hmm. the property is owned by Mr. Danforth. So the order goes to the property owner to actually have to correct the, the deficiencies. If, if after some reasonable period of time, mm -hmm. in 48 hours, what was she was given to vacate. Correct. She mm -hmm. hasn't vacated. That's conflicting information than what her advocate had advised, mm -hmm. but we'll put that aside for the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. The town's next step then yeah. is if the violations are not corrected, mm -hmm. yeah. then our next step is to go to court and say, look, we've, served, we've done this inspection. We have found violations. We've issued it's this a double order. Edged no one sword. has complied. Mm -hmm. Basically. Right. But it's like anything, it's a process. Understood. And you've got to wait until you actually get a court order. And and, and in fairness, a judge doesn't want to kick somebody out of their right. house either. They'd rather turn to Mr. Danforth, who's a property owner, and say, okay. can't we get the electrical address? Can't we get some oil in the tank? But we're we fearing if we do comply with everything, she's not going to she's leave. She's not, not going to leave. leave. And I, I she understand. has emphatically stated that. But, but please understand, the town's job is not to help you get your tenant out. We understand that. But the fact that you did issue a 48-hour notice mm -hmm. for her to vacate, and she got the truck, it appeared that she was mm -hmm. moving out. And she just parked it there. She didn't. she didn't. And we're letting you know, actual knowledge, that she's done nothing. So okay. it's still a safety liability issue with the town, because you now know that she's still there. Right. And she's so, not doing anything. About we're we're it. trying to do our due diligence, but in the meantime, God forbid the house right. burned down tonight, the insurance company is not gonna pay because the town had notice that it was it's unsafe right. and the town did nothing because she didn't vacate and put you can see the whole Oh I know, it's a domino effect. It's it is and I'm not effect. I say yes. that respectfully. No, understood. So understood. why can't I just evict her? It's my property. She's not paying her rent. If it's not a hell, if it's insane, unsafe, she shouldn't be living there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's three answers right there. I need my niece to move in to take care of me. I am not sick. And the court has already issued him an order to pay. He's most likely going to go to jail. He's most likely, whether or not you know, uh, the wiring inspector is going to you know give us partial complaints. Hopefully so, but if not, and he goes to goes away, 
then it's effectively condemned and she's still in the house. Then what? He's in jail and she gets the house because the town put it on a back burner? The town's going to take the next steps at that point because of the violations. But what we're asking is you be proactive and we'll be proactive. That's what we're asking. I think if we have a mutual understanding that you're going to act, you know, in getting her out of there based upon the 48-hour condemnation, especially since she was so uh, keen with the judge and said, you know, adamant, it's an illegal department, apartment and it's condemned and, you know, give her housing money for each night. Mm -hmm. So she's already got that order in her favor, and now we're going to do everything to comply. But at the same time, we would like the town to work on that 48-hour vacate because I, I, if I the safety does become an issue... Stop right here. I, I do understand, but if tomorrow the inspector goes mm -hmm. out and meets with your electrician and is satisfied that the work done... Then I'm done, fine with that. But I'm saying thereafter, if there's something that's mm -hmm. not in compliant and he goes to jail... Where is if if the wire is all set, the house is in compliance. Her apartment. Well, that's not what she said. Electrical. It depends on what the electrical inspector finds tomorrow, because as he said, just looking at Mr. Cohen's letter, if seventy-five percent of this was done, he might be happy enough with that to at least say that that it, he can lift the condemnation order doesn't mean that it would be 100% compliance. There might still be some things right. that need to be done. And there will be those. But not necessarily things that are such um, a risk of, of safety to condemn it. And so that's he, what we want clarification right. on. And, they, so, and they'll lift right. the commendation and then she'll just say, well, it's not condemned. I don't have to leave. That's true. But what if it become a civil thing that has nothing to do with that? Right. Well, it doesn't have anything it doesn't. to do. It doesn't. But it indirectly, does. right. in some respect, it does because it comes back to that 48-hour notice. Mm -hmm. The court says they don't have jurisdiction to act on the board's letter if, um, giving her 48-hour notice. Right. Well, this board did I'm not. Sorry. It was the. The Department the of Inspectional department. Services. Okay. This right. board tabled it with no vote and no further we were going right. to discuss it two weeks after what happened is things escalated yeah. because of safety issues of electrical where someone can get harmed or hurt okay so so it now is out of the board of health's hands mm -hmm. and was put into inspectional services which is the building gotcha. and the inspectional and the health agent now, we have clarification that the health agent mm -hmm. is available tomorrow. I've asked Lisa to get in touch with you guys to see if you can all go over there and let's take a look at it. The key is the permit. i got to have that permit. Oh, okay, I will anything. call him. This, yep. it, he's the only one who can pull it, the electrician. Right. The only one. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So what should he be here first thing in the morning? What time will you if, be? If he's here at quarter eight, I'm, in, I'm there at quarter eight. Any okay. time after that. Okay, and I think it would be it would behoove us not to have all three go together. I agree. And if need be, then they can call a police officer, and a police officer can accompany them to the property. Okay. Did you say all three should go together? I would like to see all three, if at all possible. Yes. I would like if to. If at all possible. I Those are all three safe. sections. Those are all That's three sections yeah. of the house that need to be inspected. Now, our health agent comes back with a sanitary code violation like because there's no oil. Yeah, and I don't know where, what you were talking about. She, she was, it was Lisa. Did out. Lisa go out for another report? Yeah, they went out, she went out last week, for, uh, last Friday. There was a no heat. The tenant has a letter from whoever gives Social aid, housing. You know, that she the, couldn't the, get a voucher. oil says you're eligible for, for mm -hmm. aid. Mm -hmm. But we cannot give you aid because you're not in a legal apartment. No, that's not what it says, if I could correct you. That was the gist you. of it. That okay, she was denied for the following reasons. Mm -hmm. There's one letter basically denying her. Fuel assistance? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it says, and I'll make a copy for yeah. everybody, her, she's been denied. You live in an ineligible dwelling unit Which they for fuel assistant purposes as defined in one of the three categories. There are um, ineligible dwellings include these categories by the Massachusetts law but are not limited to hospitals, nursing home, dormitory, university owned housing, prison, etc. Uh, ineligible eligible dwelling units, often temporary in nature, are mobile structures and structures 
or other shelters not used for year-round human habitation. Example, intangible dwellings include a recreational vehicle, tent, camper, boat, cars, or trucks. There's also other circumstances where dwelling units are ineligible due to their condition. Examples include condemned units, and they, uh, which it has okay, been, yeah. units without occupancy permits, and units with inoperable and hazardous heating sources. This is the fuel. It says she had an incomplete application. They both issued. So it was somewhat confusing, but it's not an illegal apartment that was suggested by Lisa. I have a question for the two of you. Yes. It, it, in a perfect this? world, is your hope to have the condemnation order lifted and then attempt to continue to evict her through the courts? Or is your hope to have the condemnation order remain and try to get your tenant out within this 48-hour period? I'm because going those, to jail if it's not fixed. Could I try to get an answer yeah, to that it's question? Because those are two question. different. It's certainly a very good question, and I could say yes on both. Yeah, I know because you can say I yes mean on I could both. say yes. Because it could go if either tomorrow, way. If tomorrow, because I don't feel that we're going to be in full compliance especially if Lisa went out last week and we never got notice of whatever she might have picked up last week. Um, Sheila didn't elaborate, but I don't know what else might have been on there. We're certainly willing to continue to act in due diligence and good faith in the hopes that Nick at least issues what we need to comply. But again, knowing that X, Y, and Z might be outstanding from Lisa or from whomever, we would like to simultaneously expect something to be done about the 48 hours if we're not in full compliance by this time tomorrow because there's a good chance that he's going to be held in contempt. So the answer to my question is you don't know. No, yes to both simultaneously. Well, it, it can't be yes to both to, Go ahead. to have the condemnation order lifted. If it lifts in a And then also world. have her evicted or take removed because there's a condemnation order in place. I mean, there. No, I would like the condemnation. Excuse me. I would like the condemnation order lifted. Okay. The house brought up to compliance. Okay. And then, but evict her. And then, then, which but she which hasn't is, paid rent since August. I understand that. But they don't Believe have me. jurisdiction over the eviction as yeah. far as they they would provided it still stayed con condemned. Am I right? Well, yeah, but if it still stays condemned, I have a chance of them coming and finding me and throwing me in jail. You're going to be thrown in jail if you don't pay for her hotel and her housing anyway. So we need to. You act. can't get blood out of a stone. But you'll go to jail. You'll be held in contempt. You heard it today, okay? You haven't paid. I would rather. I would rather not see her die up there or someone die down. Right, but if you go to jail and the house is still condemned. Hopefully, we'll have someone working on her 48-hour, you know, vacay. But in the interim, there, there we must, need to comply. There must be something I'm missing here, because I would think that personal life okay, and personal safety would rule okay. over everything and then take it from there. So are you saying Am I that wrong? you want her to go Am forward? Am I wrong? We just think in the perfect think world wrong? it's not going to happen tomorrow. Okay. I mean, realistically, well, I don't think. I'm agreeing with you. You you know what you're doing. You what would you do if you were me? And you know, just say, well, the, you could do this or do that. Or, but I would do this. I don't think Nick can answer that question. Why can't he? It's a, I throw my question. Uh, it's not you know. It's just what well, would you question do? Question that I have, question? assuming you know, if we scoop going back to ten o'clock tomorrow, if I have that permit. Yeah. Let's say okay, it is seventy-five percent. Then I'm 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 okay happy. With Maybe yeah. even. Uh, Better than happy. Mm -hmm. I'm still worrying and scared about the way she's heating the place. Exactly. Yeah, right. okay. I'm scared exactly. to I'm death. petrified. You know what? I can imagine what, uh, one of the first complaints we got down here was her electric bill is killing her. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, heating with electric range. Mm -hmm. She's got a non shut off for medical reasons. Uh, exactly. Okay. So that's why so I, she I just can't care what she burns. I threatened a couple of times, I'll pull the plug. Not right. so easy to pull the well, plug. Well, that's what she told the mm -hmm. court that you're going to pull the plug. Right. Mm. Not so easy. So that was a big highlight. Our company today. can't shut it off for no payment either, just for the same reason. You know, yep. so. So, you, you know, and, and, and that's the other thing is just that, you know, if, if these electrical appliances are running, 
you know, again, this is something that I said to you on, on, on the telephone. Yeah. I'm not only concerned about her welfare, Absolutely. I am concerned about his and that's welfare. one of the main points that I think we need clarification right. on. And, right now, and that's what I'm asking. Right. And that's what, that's what Carolyn's going to help us help um, guide this process. But can I respectfully just ask one question for clarification? The letter appears to state in the condemnation letter dated January 12th that it's apartment two that's being condemned. has Correct. nothing to do with his. Nobody's called to notify anything about the un inhabitability of his apartment. So why is that an issue? Why do they have to go through his apartment? I understand hers needs to be brought up to code, but why would this affect his dwelling? Basement. Oh, the basement they can go through. There's no need for them to go. They, if they want to go to the first floor, they can. There's nothing wrong. But am I correct? The bulkhead. I almost put my head open. I want to go through the bulkhead. I, I again. need a new bulkhead. I'm, I'm not going through the bulkhead. Yeah, again. you. Oh, you can come yeah. right through the front. The, okay. My but side we're door. correct. It's apartment two. It has bad. nothing to do with his other than the basement. Mm. So it's the basement. The guy was down there seven hours Excellent. in the basement. Good. Good. And That's hold good on. News. Apparently, part of the egress goes through your apartment. That's what I'd, I'd like to. I'll be there at ten o'clock tomorrow. No, no, no. They just said that those those egresses do not go. I, I looked up the word egress. It's it's an exit, yeah. but it exits into my. Both of them exit into my apartment, and weren't you? You say you can't exit into my apartment. That's not an egress. Well, it's an exit out of that apartment upstairs. You leave your door open. Excuse me? You leave the doors open? If you take down the wall... The wall, it locks from her side. But, and I again, can't clarification on the escape ladder, is that going to comply? No. no. So, what type... They put a regular regulation stairway off that deck. So, they don't or, allow the escape ladders or anymore? she can come down those stairs freely and go through his unit without any unlocked doors and get out his doors, then she only needs a, a sleeping, emergency sleeping window, what the deck would qualify for. And you said you rent the room on the left. You told us yeah, at our meeting you rent the, the room one goes to the hall. on the left, which is a bedroom. Right, but he's which is, now and that's boarded last over. Weekend was his but last the other one goes right into the hallway. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be very okay. easily. Uh, George is going to be there tomorrow, and he's going to advise. Yeah, well, okay. okay. Laura, uh, not Laura. Get that like Sorry, Marianne. Home. Marianne. I'm just noting the dates on those letters. I didn't even notice that. What are the yeah. different states? September yeah. and October. So we are now sitting in January. Yeah. So I just got copies of these. One was an today. incomplete application. Yeah. Which is on what date? The incomplete uh, uh, 920. 920. No, application date was 915. 915, 915 incomplete application for fuel assistance, then followed by an October. Um, and Sheila has copies of these. Um, Mid October, denied? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, right now we are January 22nd. Right. So something's not right. I think you need a really good lawyer. Well, something's like not I said, right he's with have the a guardian ad litem. He's actually mm -hmm. an attorney for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. housing court. Mm -hmm. So someone that really represents and can advocate his good. best interest. Okay. Which will be good. But so in the interim, we'll, we'll try and do everything possible. Okay, so I would like to, unless there are any other questions, we do have people, um, yeah. we are very backed up tonight. Um, George Very and Nick, if you want, you can go into the other office, sure. grab each one of their business cards, so you have them. Carolyn, if you can stay in touch with Lisa, I want to send out Nick, George, and Lisa tomorrow, tomorrow to the property. Mm -hmm. If have to be a uniformed police officer to gain access, I think at this point. And then we'll all re you guys will all regroup. Put out the wire for me. I'm not going. I know you're not. Okay. So he has I'm to be here at eight o'clock in the morning. So who is going? I said if we have the wire permit. All three of us will be there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to call Steve tonight. Now, I'm going to yeah. say, yep. yep. We should call here. him from here. And for some reason he's not, or he can't. I know he had a wake. I don't need him there. As long as I have the permit. But he, he has can't to get it over the phone. He has to physically present, presumably. <clears throat> I'd rather have him there so he could show me exactly. So he could go there and. Mm get the permit issued? From He's got to come here and get the permit right. issued. He would come here after he went to my house, he would come here and get the permit issued? No, no. get the permit first. 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 Don't here. Go, don't go to your house. Okay. So come here okay. first, get the permit, meet you maybe 8 o'clock and then go from there. Perfect. I will call you and let you know, leave you a message either way. 
in the hopes that because he might have that wake or a funeral in the morning. Okay. And if he meets us down there, I'll bring the permit down to him. Okay, that's okay. more than I'll reasonable. I'll that. I'll bring that okay, one very nice of you, Nick. Thank you. Yes. Well, well, thank you very much. Thank you yeah. all very much. Okay. Okay. Really and how this is going to play I out? This is the I, first I don't know, I but like you know, I'm looking at those dates and I'm like, wait a minute. I do. She's just dragging her feet, so you have to have somebody hold. Yeah, you want ten o'clock? And it was horrible today. I didn't tell you. He wants ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Okay. Ten o'clock at the house. At the house. At the house. Yeah. Get the permit before that. Yep. Yeah. But if he's. I'll bring one down with me. Have him just in case. Yeah. Okay. If he comes down beautiful. But if not, I'll go down there. But if he has, if he doesn't show up. I understand. Got it. Okay. 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 And if she won't allow you in, you will call the police and try and get emergency because it is an urgent situation to get everything rectified. Mm hmm and Lisa's gonna let us know as far as Lisa will be on site as well with both these gentlemen Lisa and go with them how much fuel would need to and purging of the system would have to be done to comply that's the part I don't understand I'm yeah I don't I know wiring good but how could she be dictate whatever and say because she didn't get fuel she assistance had a condemnation order of that that's what I don't understand safe. either how right. could she be there dictating on we don't we I'm not in your way she's not even supposed to she's supposed to vacate the property how is she in there dictating Exactly. That is, that, that's been my argument all along. It it's my it's house. And she's telling me oil. what to do. D is there any? It's not the fact that you don't have oil. It's the fact that there's no heat. Right. And it's, again, a double-edged sword because she's no heat trying source. to save money. But in the meantime, if he fills the tank and we comply, she's going to move right back in. And then mm -hmm. there's still no recourse. We can go back to the courts, mm -hmm. but then it's another, you know, three months and she's still there. And then you won't act on anything. So we're like between a rock and a hard place. Do we but comply? Now you have an advocate, right? Well, he's getting an. But the court system, you wouldn't believe how backed up they Mondays only down here. So well, let's work on making it safe first before we go right. any further. Okay, exactly. Yeah, right. let's Agreed. Start that, okay. We, we okay. The thank you very much. Um, you. Um, thank you. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Appreciate thank it, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, this is the first time I think we. I know it's, you know, it's made some headways. It's it's so confusing. Thank you. I do. And your name is Gail. Yes. Thank you, Gail. All right, Rick, quick, hurry up. <laughs> Thank Come you on, very Ryan, much, Gail. So, so sorry we had about the delay. We right two weeks ago that we huh? wouldn't have to be doing this right now. Exactly. Right? <laughs> nice show to watch, um, Thank you so much. I never read the um, yes. chairman's statement. And get your cards and stuff sure. like that. Sorry, Thank Thank you. Good luck. Okay. 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 Do we have a Yes. I'll send them right away. Yes. Welcome All right. Back. Wampa All right. Talk. Well, and I apologize. Don't but that was apologize. I just am so sorry. So I'm sorry. Hard. I know. It's so very cool. trials and tribulations. Thank and you. Unweaving the sweater. Thank you. Okay. Sometimes it's not easy. No. But we have to do our best, you have to and do we have best. to stay very mm -hmm. so unbiased. Many interjecting factors yes. nowadays with regulations mm -hmm. and yep, yeah, the human condition. Absolutely, and the human it's and the human element is, is very heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to move right into okay. uh, two. Oh, sorry. Can I get your name? 17. Mario uh, and Carol. 223. Mario and Carol D'Ambrosio. 223. Wampatuck. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the one we sent back. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? We had some discrepancies in our setbacks to the yep. tributary to a surface water supply. Mm -hmm. So we actually labeled the dimensions on the plan here now. So from the leaching to the tributary is at 155, 155 feet. From the jet tank to the tributaries 158 feet and both of those numbers now correspond to the local upgrade approval requests and then to the wetland tributary to our surface water supply we've got 70.5 to leaching and 71.9 to the jet tank um, so all of those numbers all make sense with the list of local upgrade requests uh, and also with the 
letter that accompanied it. Okay. And this is the new revised one? As that is correct. Letter. Okay. So there's one town variance. Okay. On the design um, flow. On the design. And then we have four against the upgrade request. Um, does anybody have any further questions? I have, I've got a question of Mr. Grady. Sure. I'm looking at an email, excuse me, I'm looking at a memo that was prepared from our administrator, Sheila Landy, and I just want to make sure that I'm clear. It says the current plan is a one-bedroom home, and that, Correct. that is... Yeah, that I, I look at that another time myself as well because I said, why are we doing this? Two bedrooms seems odd. Well, I know we're required to design for three anyways. It has to do with the lot size mm -hmm. of 16,200 square feet in a nitrogen sensitive area. Mm -hmm. So that's why they limited it to one bedroom when they did the initial approval. And, and they for one bedroom per. And they're aware of that. And yes. I mean, I'm just checking. Yeah. Yeah. They and it are. will it's a deed restriction mm -hmm. so yeah, it, it will be filed with the property yes, yeah. at the I, registry. I did the exact same thing. I was going back through it after we met a couple weeks ago. And why, why, why? Well, I read it and I thought maybe it, yeah. I was missing something. You certainly did your mm -hmm. homework and on this one. Back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> it had to do with the lot size being only 16,000 square feet. Yeah. Question on lot sizes. Besides being able to, you know, put something there, how big can it be? Uh, the house itself? Yeah. The house itself Basically, we have to propose the size. There's nothing in the town regulations that says it can be 1,000 square feet or it can be 5,000 square feet. We have to design what we think makes sense for the property. We designed a 24 by 34 foot footprint. Um, two reasons, it fits. And also, it's what they had approved 10 years ago when they first approved the same lot. Okay. Um, and 24 by 34 is a modest home. Okay. I was just curious because sometimes you see, you know, someone maybe with one of the older properties and mm -hmm. someone comes in and they build something that looks like a three-story tenement house. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you look over towards Hanson. Yep. And I was just curious, is there so like a limitation on what someone could actually... It really depends on the lot size. Mm -hmm. It depends on the zoning. It depends on quite a few right. different yeah. things. Okay. Um, so that's and different. how much footage you have it's to your side home. properties. Yeah. 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 It, there's a lot if of variables in that yeah. whole process. I, I, okay. Honestly, I picture a cape with an open floor plan, one bedroom on the second floor and mm -hmm. on the first floor, but that's just yeah. me speculating. The the first floor, would what you do is you take the, um, the dimensions, 34 by 24, 816 square feet on the first level. So depending on if they put a second level, um, you know, where is that one bedroom going to reside? Okay. They could put it on the second floor and have a one bedroom with maybe like a loft area. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a small, it's not a very big house. Okay, I was just kind of curious because mm -hmm. I've seen some. Mm-hmm. So Do really you, either one of you have either and either concerns? Any other concerns? Not really. I think um, the process has been, uh, you know, quite informative. Um, I forget what year they presented some stuff. I think it was around 2005 or so. Yeah, about 10 years ago. Yeah. I guess yeah. About what I have to. Yeah. And uh, we thought at that time that they said, you know, they couldn't do anything. I don't recall that anything had been approved. But this is kind of an interesting process where you have um, so many things being done. Because mm -hmm. about 12 years ago, Lisa um, said years ago when she was new to the board, there was a discussion regarding the property. Um, a home that was a three bedroom, very, very small, was taken down due to safety concerns. Nothing Parts of the foundation to. remain. Partial owners are fine. Parcel owners are fine with that, but did request the town honor their right to rebuild another home in the future. Now, who answered that? Who gave, said it? Who mm. gave them in writing or just a verbal? We do not know, as they didn't have the funds to build the middle immediately. Current plan is a one-bedroom home due to Title V restrictions. The project is consistent with other projects in the area. Okay. Okay, so that was a no. Up to 2003 on the previous plan okay. that we were provided. Okay. Okay. Very good memory. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Very good memory.
Yeah. <laughs> so, with respect to the property, 217 Wampatuck, I'm going to make a motion to approve, accept the four variances as written. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. So we're all set. Okay. You have a great day. Yeah, keep watching. Sorry you have watching that so long. You're doing fun. a great job on it. We'll we'll thank you, really thank you for your be patience. Be and I want to echo That's some good. of the things that our chair said. Uh, we try. We meet twice a month and we try to stay on time, not only for the three of us, but also for those that come before the board and every now and then. We lose, we get a little behind schedule. So, well, it's certainly yeah. understandable. Okay. Something I used to work that's a matter like that, yeah. 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 yeah, it's very, yeah, it's it, sometimes even the best laid plants do not come out right. Correct. Well, you know, it's, it's well a, said, it's it's well said. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're not going like anywhere. Oh, it's it's yeah. a yeah. Yeah. trail, it's too. It's okay. a yeah. lesson All right. I missed that one. Show sure. okay. how yeah. things can become out of control. We can do Indian exactly. Trail another time, right? No, it's nice steps to <laughs> follow. 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 You know, yeah. And as you get okay. older, so this one, you know, it becomes um, you know more difficult. More difficult. Yeah. He revised it. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, you guys have a great right year. Yeah. Okay. You as well. You so this one. Oh, um, I'm not coming in. Just get you. Uh, oh, Mr. Grady, you again. I almost walked out on it without realizing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, so, I stopped you, Mr. <laughs> Grady. This came in today, my second. Oh, right. Yeah, we had a, on the actual plan itself, we had listed a additional local upgrade inadvertently. We had listed a setback to the foundation of 18 feet when we had already proposed the 20. Yep. So we did not need that one. But there, mm -hmm. were, there were two that you initially proposed, Correct. right? So okay. now we're only talking about one separation to groundwater so that we can minimize the effect of a mounded system here. We can actually get very close to existing grade by approval of this local upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, get an existing 100 contour in this area. We would need to bring it up to about 100.6, so it would come up about a half a foot or so over the end of the reaching area by reducing the separation of groundwater by one foot. So from five to four? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. So, that's all. That so it maintains drainage patterns. And um, this plan has the first one removed, correct? Correct, right okay. here. Awesome. The only one we so have we've got is that one feet. right okay. here. Okay. Yep. 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 No increase in flow. The previous um, one we had had this one as well. Um, yep. Okay. And I believe the initial letter was correct. It was a carryover on the plan itself that Lisa had picked up on us. Yeah. Um, actually, it was Primer. Oh, okay. Dave Primer picked it up. Um, when, when did, Rick, when did you find out that <laughs> the only one of the two variances, well, one wasn't needed? Was that a fairly recent communicate to you? Yes, yeah, Lisa contacted us Wednesday or Thursday, okay, Thursday so, I think. All right, within the last week. Oh yeah. Within the past week. Yep. Okay. I want to say it was Thursday. Okay, so the setback to the cellar wall was originally on it, but that has come off. Correct. The new plan now is only stating that there is a reduction in the separation. That's um, right. Anybody have any further questions? No. Okay. I'm going to make a motion. I'm sorry. I'm going to make a motion to accept the local variance as written on Four Indian Trail. I'm going to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That was a lot easier than the last time. I was a little bit prepared this time. You did a great job. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and while I while we're waiting for Mr. Poirier to come in, we got a letter. Um, Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thanks again um, for your patience. Commonwealth of Massachusetts from uh, Josh Cutler. He just sent along um, to package? the Board of Health. No, this oh. is just a, a correspondence that was received that I got today, oh. okay. um, or I opened today. It's a list of uh, state grant opportunities. So what I'm going to do is give this to Lisa, um, have her see if the other boards actually got this package. If they didn't, maybe to peruse through it and see if there are any available grants that the town of Pembroke and different departments can look into and go forward with. Okay. So that information will be here in the office. Madam Chair. Yes. 
I, I know we've moved on from 87 Taylor, but before we take Mr. Poria, yeah. I, I saw this on in front of me. And is this in relationship? And I'm assuming that the family, we weren't expecting the Dan, Mr. Danforth here tonight. Is this open meeting? I don't know if that was, if um, Ms. Murray was. A, it's updated. Yeah, that shows to keep. This is the new one coffee? as of October 2017. Okay, but this, this wasn't being. Well, I mean, I saw Ms. Murray here. Was there any? We're no, just Ms. giving Murray an update. Was here strictly about 87 tickets. This is just an update. Yeah. All right. That's all this I wanted to know. This is the most know. revised. Got it. Thank you. And then Sheila wanted us to make sure that we have about um, emergency if that question did arise for any board members. Okay. It's highlighted in here for you. I just, when I see Ms. Murray, I associate mm -hmm. her with the open meeting and I thought maybe yeah, there was a no, violation. Yeah, no, okay. that was thank due you. to Mr. Poria, DMI. Mr. Poria, Mr. Poria, thank you once again. You guys have been okay. very patient. Okay, what's happening? All set to go. The guy, Nick Pistor is going to be doing it. He's going to come in uh, the next few days to get the license. And Nick, the what's his last name? Pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R. He's a big uh, contractor down the Cape. So he's going to come in, he's going to send me over the contract um, in the morning. So as soon as he sends it over to me, I'll sign it, and then I'll forward you guys a copy here. I'll email it to Sheila so you guys have it. Okay, he uh, does need to come in and get yeah, licensed. The permit, yep, so he said that he'd be in this, this week mm -hmm. uh, to get the permit and the license. Um, he got already got the plans from Merrill. He knows exactly what it is. Um, so we're good to go. He said he'll start probably two weeks. And he believes it's going to be a five or six week project, depending on the weather. Are you financing it through him? And yes, some of it, yeah. Yeah, okay. he's working because we're a seasonal business. So I say, listen, I'll have some money for you in the February. I'll have some more for you in March, a little bit more for you in April. He goes, yeah, as, as long as I can get him enough to cover the supplies, he's willing to work with me. So not only have you been negotiating on the price, price. and the process. and the, It's the, the timing of it, yeah. But he's on. you've agreed to the whatever that financing yes. agreement yep. is. Your, yep, yep. So that's where we talked about it today on the phone. He goes, all right, I'll give it to my guy tomorrow morning. He'll type it up, send it over to you, just sign it. And then he said to be in this week to get whatever he needs. Six. So five to six weeks is going to bring me mid-March. Yes, hopefully it'll be before then, mm -hmm. depending on weather. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, um, the planning board asked me to let you guys know that your temporary parking. Yes, is up in March. Is up in March. Yep. But after this, it's, it's all yeah. inclusive, right? It's going to yeah. straighten everything out. So Merrill's going to be doing the the layout of everything, the grading. So, so hopefully everything's going to coincide at the same yes. time. Yes, so that I don't You're have to bring the contract the back in. Yeah. And the parking's going to be straightened yes. out, mm -hmm. and life is going to be wonderful. Yeah, it's just the level, because the, the soil was so bad there, the septic's up a little higher than we thought it was going to be. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So now the grading into the parking lot for the drainage, Peter has to change up how it's going to go and where it's going to go to mm -hmm. and he's but he said he was confident he can make it work it's just that the septic's a little higher than we thought so the drainage will be fine just just a little editorial from a citizen okay not from a board member okay you've got some competition in the area yes uh you've had a you've had an issue that's been going on for quite some time yeah. the phone calls are still coming in to our yeah. office I mean, I would never, t I, it's, it's not my business yeah. nor my place to say you need to do a better job, and I'm not saying that, yeah. you need to do a better job with your PR, with your marketing, but I think if you're, you know, your heart's in the right place and, and as a businessman, yeah. you want to succeed, and I, and I just hope that you're... You we have know, a letter drawn up. Well, I just, I, I just hope you're out. paying attention yeah. to, you oh, know, yeah. you know, social media is a double-edged sword, and, and I, I just hope that you're cognizant of as a businessman yeah. you know for what it's worth I'm i just didn't want to send out an email letting everybody know until i have a signed contract know where it's going we'll just send the whole email out because yeah. we're going to update the lighting in there also and the heating and, and the you lighting. got full permits for that right yeah okay. yeah yeah it's okay. through that mass safe mm -hmm. so we're changing out all the lights to a different one but i said let's wait let me fix this first okay. and then we'll do this so we got an email going out. I mean, we just lost the guy that ran the girls' side of our basketball program. Okay. I mean, you, yeah. you admit you've lost, you some goodwill has yes. not been in your, on your side. Oh yeah, everybody. They're all calling me. We had people calling today to confirm. Like right now, we have trials going on right now. People are like, oh, no, we were told they were canceled. Mm -hmm. Canceled. Mm. Okay, so you seem to be making strides. 
Um, I think I, 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 I would, unless there's any further discussion or questions mm -hmm. anyone has, right now we've been advised that um, possibly starting next week with a five to six week completion date, which will bring us to mid-March. Yeah, he said a two, couple weeks start time. He had to come in and get all mm -hmm. the stuff necessary here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I said, well, when can you start? As soon as possible. Right, okay. And he said that he was going to order the tanks. Yep. So the tanks are ready to go in. He's not waiting. Right. Okay. Do it. So what I'm thinking is, is that um, I think I'd like to make a motion for us to turn around and revisit this at our first meeting in the month of March. Um, could, could to get a better update. We say please. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I I, I was I, I'm sorry. I was looking that way. Okay. I'll make a motion to um, revisit this topic and get a further update um, on our first meeting in the month of March. Okay. Just point of clarification. When you say revisit this update, could we ask as part of your motion? Could you have asked Mr. Poirier to come in and Absolutely. give us a personal report? Yep. yep. Mr. Poirier, would you mind, what, Sheila? What is that date? Do we have our schedule uh, I don't have it that far out right to yet. that? I, I want to say, well, we're meeting on the, the 19th, I'm sorry, the 12th and the 26th, which will push us out. Really? And so we'll meet on the 12th and the 26th. Funny how that works. Okay. Of March? So yep. 12th. The 12th. Uh, 12th. Yep. 312. Is that the um before St. Patty's Day? So we'll 312. Okay, so is, is, is that our first first meeting of of March, March the first one? Okay. Yep. Okay. If you want, we can move it up. But. So I'll second that motion made thank by you. Madam Chair. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Super. Thank you for coming in, John. No problem. Thank you, and again, You're I welcome. apologize for the calls. No, um, that's okay. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think they're going to keep coming. Check out that bleacher. Yeah, there's actually one on the side, but no, he didn't say anything to anybody. But we got everything videotaped anyway, so we can see if there's something there. But there's two in the very back corner that are missing the end caps. So we'll uh, take care of that tomorrow. I just was at tryouts. I looked and walked oh, no, around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what uh, what time is that? Is it seven o'clock? I'm putting it on my phone now. Um, you'll get a you'll you know, set I'll, a, I'll set, yeah. You, you want you'll notify him of the time. Well, all right, I'll, yeah, just notify me. I put it in for seven-ish seven yeah, changes, yeah. Seven-ish. Okay. okay. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I don't want to beat um, a dead horse, um, but for 87 um, Taylor Street, I want to, for the record, make it clear that our agenda was only scheduled today to have the Director of Municipal Inspections plus legal counsel who he felt needed to be here, the building inspector and the um, electrical inspector. We did not post on the agenda um, that it was a debate for the tenant and landlord situation. So I want to make that perfectly clear. The purpose was to get the town administrator to update, update the board and town council to uh, advise us on the habitability of the unit yeah. okay and as we have seen you know we've got heating sources as well um, and that's against 410 CMR sanitation yeah. well, which is the minimum requirement for the habitation under the DPH regulation Board of Health regulation okay. Madam Chair while you brought the subject up again and I, and I don't want to revisit and open up Pandora's box uh, while I may or may not agree with the outcome, my sympathies are, are, are clearly with both the landlord and the tenant. It's, it's, it's a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, I, I may or may not agree with what's happened so far. Um, the, the process and, and the lack of communication as a board member has troubled me, and, and that was... That was what I was going to echo had Mr. Thorne been able to stay okay. and had the mm -hmm. landlord and the tenant. That wasn't the time and the place to bring that up. But I, I do think the Division of Inspectional Services needs to do a better job. And, and I'm not speaking for the you to my right or you to my left. But I, I think from the events that transpired from our last meeting, you know, the emergency meeting, the condemnation, I, I thought 
the communication was to say it's poorly done I would say it was almost a rather than saying poorly communicated back to the board I felt it was non-existent could I have come in here and spoken to our health agent and and Sheila and the answer is yes but I think the magnitude of this issue given that you called an emergency meeting and I'm not saying I'm not blaming you and I'm actually not blaming anyone I'm more I'm more saying going forward somebody needs to and maybe a party needs to do a, a clearer job at communicating and that that was a frustration that I had and again I would have echoed that to Ed to Mr. Thorne to Mr. Varian and to mm -hmm. Nick but mm -hmm. again that wasn't the time and place to bring that up so I just wanted to go on record as say, and I, stating and I, that. I, I, I do agree with you um, with the um, trying to get together and try and avoid I think what happened this evening or oh. what was going to happen um, on, on this day because we knew that there was going to be court um, when we could not hold the emergency meeting um, it actually because the Board of Health voted to table it and it was stated that this was not a Board of Health issue that it was felt that it was a wiring but they went hand in hand because we did have a health sanitation report and the three regulations against Massachusetts code for our health agent at that point it was felt that the safety of both individuals within the building was in danger again not not the facts but the, the lack of non-existence of mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. back to me as a board member mm -hmm. I would have fully expected that I would have heard from, that the board would have heard from someone right. from this office exactly what was going on. Mm -hmm. So that that's my and and there's no blame, there's no fault. It's more of a going forward. Mm -hmm. You know that. Yep. So. Agreed. Agreed. And and I'll also add, you, you know, you took the lead as chair tonight, and that that was, you were not expecting to see. No. landlord here and, and you handled the situation with great aplomb. Right, but I need everyone to understand that they were not invited, nor was the tenant, nor was our purpose to discuss their situation. It was for the DMI division of the town and council to advise us as to where we stand and where communicate to us so that we can understand where does the habitability stand. Because yeah, you had an email question that, you know, Excuse was me. that unit number two was condemned. Well, yes, it was. But it was condemned through the wiring inspector. But now, if that wiring inspection is done, now we may be back here with the other portion of it. Correct. But I think so. I'm going to echo Mr. Fine's um, comment on that the lack of communication or the lack of knowledge of what was going on for these people. Um, I'm still, and I know it has nothing to do with the board, but I'm still kind of perplexed as why the, ten why the landlord has got to suffice the heat for the tenant when the tenant was responsible out of it. Uh, out of the contract. This is, and I know this is civil action, but this this still perplexes me. This puts it, it this gives so many different, I believe I used the word the tentacles the last meeting. Mm -hmm. This has developed so many tentacles, and this is a man's home. Um, I can't give them any more advice than what I told Mary Ann today. She needed to talk to Mr. Thorne. Um, I have mm -hmm. a feeling that they showed today, knowing that Mr. Thorne was coming tonight. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any control over no. anything of that. Um, and that's certainly the homeowner's right and right to do so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would never suggest any which way. The, the, I think the meeting went well as far as having all parties in the room for some clarity right. as to what was going on. Right, because they were operating, um, they, they, it came out of our court and it went into another court. And but see, that's where the clarity, uh, yes. he, I believe my personal point of view is that Mr. Danford should have been notified from where he was going to to the next step 
rather than for him having to no knowledge of and that just was, the last right. meeting. But that was left in Nick's hands because Nick took the lead on it and 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 dealt with it under the electrical section. I understand that. Right, because the question becomes the question that is asked is do you believe the tenant is at risk for harm, shock, or fire mm -hmm. due to the electricity? And the answer was yes. So therefore, he said, I cannot, knowing that I went in there and inspected it, allow it to be habitable. Right. So now, but we can't control what's being said. Well, we can't get into the basis. court situation cannot, with the cannot. tenant Absolutely. disassembling the Absolutely. apartment to make it Absolutely. illegal. Right. So, so that's why I was um, pretty disheartened that we didn't wait until the court date and to come back because what I was hearing today, other actions that were taken made it a lot more difficult to unravel the situation. Um, legal counsel advised that... That's besides that what I'm saying, Donna, is that because of the events that have taken place mm -hmm. and um, the lack of people knowing who they were going to deal with and the lack of... Um, on my part, of knowledge of what was going forward past that Monday meeting mm -hmm. um, made it very difficult. Okay. 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 Yep. I agree. I agree. So, so we have the health agents report. Um, the Pembroke um, one establishment, which is the Pembroke Hospital. Sheila has two curly binders. The septic design has gone to the state. Uh, if anybody so chooses not to be able to sleep, if you want to read it, it will reside here. But that one is moving along perfectly. Um, the other one is still out there. Actually, uh, did she say that she they kind of resolved the pH issue? Don't she say um, they they. They install the pH system, which is in addition to the what was out there. So what was happening was the um, it's a industrial bakery, right? It does like the, mm -hmm, the donuts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's large amounts of yeast, uh, yeast grease, flour, yeast. Mm -hmm. milk, cream, you know, mm -hmm. things that are all you no know, good for a, a septic system. But what was happening is the pH balance was off. Yeah. So the good microbes weren't getting to do their job mm -hmm. because they were being overwhelmed by the yeast and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So they figured out what to add to the drains as it, as it leaves the building to compensate the action of the yeast. Okay, is that in here? Because I'm no. I mean, it, all she said was that they installed. Uh, in her agent report, general update, mm -hmm. Connecticut New Street is about the third paragraph. Okay. Installed, pH system installed, no further overflow reporting. Okay. All right. So you just so took the off. you just took the long way. So that one's going to be all set and resolved shortly. Okay. Um, for uh, we don't have any old business. Um, Before you move on, may mm -hmm. I ask a question of Miss Landy? Ms. Landy, when we, when we had a number of people in the room on 87 Taylor, you were asked to reach out to our health agent, Ms. Cullity. Yeah. I, I wasn't looking at you, nor was I focusing on you. I, 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 she uh, said she's did, available to go tomorrow. You did, call, no, did you call her? Did I you did e call her. No, I'm just asking, because I, I didn't know. So you called her and she was accessible by phone? Yes. All right, that's all. I didn't know if you emailed her or texted her, because I wasn't looking to my right. You called her and she picked up. Okay, that's all I want to know. With her own phone call, she is. Okay, thank you. I would hope that when any phone answers rings. Um, okay, so um, I would like to table general discussion. general discussion. I and would like to put that on our next agenda. Um, our next meeting is, that a motion? is on February twelfth. Yes. No, it's just, I'm, I'm just oh, tabling okay, it. Okay, got it. Um, and unless anybody has anything they would further like to discuss, um, I'd like to ask for the meeting for an adjournment. 
Do I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn February 12th. 8 p.m. Yeah, January 22nd? January 22nd at 8 p.m. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who seconded? Gary seconded. Thank you, Gary. Welcome, Sheila. That was good. I had January 12th in my head, and I'm writing down February I know. 12th. Don't, yeah. Okay, yeah. Dyslexic. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. Homeward bound. We'll put the mints out.